Directory Opus 12 is now available. If you're on Windows 10, it looks like this. And if you're on Windows 7, it looks like this. But back to Windows 10. DPI scaling is now supported throughout the program. Fonts, icons, thumbnails, layouts, columns, you name it, we scale it automatically. You can move your Opus config between machines of different DPIs, and you don't have to change a single setting. Even the window sizes and positions are taken care of, and we did a better job than the operating system itself. For dark themes, we've added the ability to recolor the file display's scroll bars and sort header. The rename dialog has been redesigned and improved. The ignore extension checkbox allows you to focus on the file name without worrying about the extension, which is kept separate and automatically preserved. In the preview list, you can turn off individual files to stop them being affected. Many batch renaming tasks can now be done by simply typing into the preview list, which can change all of the files at once without the need for wildcards or regular expressions. The Apply button lets you lock in the changes you've made so far and use them as the starting point for further rename operations on the same set of files. In case you make a mistake, the Undo button reverses the last change you applied. If your rename pattern isn't quite perfect for all of your files, you can now directly edit individual names in the preview list to correct them, which is often easier. Rename presets can now be organised into categories, with your favourites kept at the top. When loading presets which use scripts, the script editor now stays hidden, so it doesn't get in the way if you are simply using a script and not editing it. If you click open the script editor, it now opens on the side, giving you much more room to work with. And at the bottom, there's a new panel for output and error messages from the script. Scripts can now add input fields to the rename dialog, which are fed back to them to use however they want. Back in the lister, the default toolbars now list all of your rename presets automatically for instant access without going through the rename dialog. Let's say you have two files, A and B, and you want to apply a rename operation which swaps their names. Opus now detects this kind of situation and does what's needed behind the scenes to allow it to succeed. So when I click apply, the names will swap, and if I click apply again, they'll swap back. When viewing a folder, items can be hidden for many different reasons, and it isn't always obvious which settings you'd have to change to reveal them. Now, you can turn off all filtering all at once by simply clicking the hidden count on the status bar. This puts you into show everything mode. If you click there again, the view returns to normal. You can also right-click for a menu of related options. When using the filter bar, the drop-down which lets you select file extensions now also lists any relevant file type groups at the top, so you can quickly filter on all images, movies, music, and so on. The status bar can now display basic information about the selected file, and this can be useful when that information isn't shown in the main file display. And this is done using some new status bar codes. The standalone image viewer has lots of new goodies. The viewer now uses read ahead caching, so while you're viewing one image from a folder, a background thread will be loading the next image into memory, so it can be ready the moment you switch to it. For the mouse buttons in the viewer, you can now run arbitrary commands in addition to the preset options. So if you want the middle mouse button to run save as, you can do that. Any internal or external command can be run from there. A new file marking system allows you to flag particular files of interest and keep track of them in a list that appears down the side of the viewer. You can double-click files in the list to jump to them, and there are more options if you right-click them, and even more options in the Mark menu. By default, if you mark some files and then close the viewer, a file collection pointing at those files will be created and displayed, so you can perform further actions on them. The information overlay, which you can tell the viewer to display, will now automatically include the file's name when you switch into full screen mode. If you are deleting images in the viewer, and you delete the last image in the folder, the viewer will now close itself instead of staying open with the deleted file. Photoshop PSD files with transparency now have that transparency respected by thumbnails, the preview pane, and the viewer itself. If you have several images and want to crop them all in the same way, you can now do that from the viewer. Select the area which you wish to crop in the first image, and then crop and save it as you would normally. 
The viewer now remembers the rectangle which you last selected, so when you move to the next image you can tell it to reselect it. If you're only doing a few files then this is often quicker than switching to a batch processing tool. The image converter now tells you the width and height your output will be based on the parameters you've given. File display columns have new resizing and auto sizing options, including the ability to fill available space and to shrink when space is needed by more important columns. There's a separate and very detailed video about this subject alone, so please watch that afterwards if you'd like to learn more. The Windows 10 Quick Access folder can now be added to the folder tree if you prefer it to the standard favourites folder. Parent folders of the current path can now be dragged out of the breadcrumbs bar, and this can be very useful if you wish to quickly open them in new tabs. The Create Folder dialog allows you to create multiple folders at once below the current folder, which isn't new, and note that you can push return twice on the last line instead of moving the mouse and clicking OK. New to Opus 12 is the ability to create a folder and then, at the same time, create multiple folders below it. You do this by typing a pipe between each name. When creating multiple folders, you can now use this menu for additional options such as opening them all into folder tabs. Folder tabs can appear above or below the file display, and now they can also appear to the left or the right in a vertical list. Right-clicking a tab now includes the option to set its colour on an ad hoc basis, and tab colours are now displayed as an accent along the tab's edge instead of recolouring the whole tab. This means we can use the exact colour you specified without also making it impossible to tell which tab is active when lots of colours are in use. Tab colours can also be assigned via folder options, which allows you to assign colours to particular folders. If I save this format for this folder, and then open a new tab for the same folder, that tab will use the colour that I specified. If I change into other folders, the tab's colour will reset, and if I go back into the original folder, the colour will come back. A new option allows you to click the active tab to reactivate whichever tab was active before it. When saving folder options, you now have more control over what gets updated, and it is now easier to establish what you are saving as the new default way to view all of your folders. This is covered in much more detail in the separate video on column resizing and folder formats. Right-clicking the Format Lock icon on the status bar now opens a menu with quick access to favourite formats and the ability to reset the current view in various ways. The same things are also available from the Folder menu. The columns which you can add to the file display are now better organised to help you quickly find the one you're looking for. You can also search for them by typing parts of their names. Grouping by columns can now be set from the Folder Options dialog, and this includes the ability to group by columns which are not currently displayed. Of course, you can still do grouping directly from the file display as well. Navigation lock is the mode where you can be in two similar folders on the left and right, and when you navigate on one side, the other side will try to mirror your change. The mode itself is not new, but it's been improved in the new version, and it now recovers better after situations where the two sides cannot stay in sync. Labels can now be categorised instead of being in a flat list. Status icons are a new type of label, and you'll see these three by default. Let me create two more to demonstrate something they can be used for. I'm making one icon to represent folders which I have backed up, and another icon to represent folders which I want to back up. Now if I go to a lister, I can right click some folders and assign one of the icons to them, and that icon will appear in the new status column. I can select some other folders and assign the other icon to them, and that will appear as well. Status icons are in addition to normal labels, so you can have a label changing the colour or even the main icon of files, while separate status icons appear in the column next to them. Wildcard labels can now be reordered in preferences, so you can prioritise your labels in situations where two mutually exclusive labels may match the same file. File displays now have configurable vertical grid lines in addition to the old horizontal options. You can combine both in various ways. 
In icon modes, you now have the option of keeping the list of columns at the top for sorting. If you like the relative size and date graphs, but don't like the space that they use up, you now have the choice of displaying them behind the regular size and date columns. When showing folder sizes, it's common for the size of folders to be much greater and dominate the size of any individual files. And it's also rare that you'd want to compare the size of a file to a folder. So now the size graphs for files and folders are independent of each other. Thumbnails now adjust spacing as you resize the window. And additionally, the current file will always be kept in view, so you don't lose your position if the layout of your files changes drastically as a result of resizing. The simple Find panel has been redesigned with a clearer layout. It now uses bold labels to highlight which criteria are currently in use. The Reset button at the bottom can be used to clear all of the conditions and return you to a clean starting point. The new Any Word option allows you to search for words in any order. For example, I've typed in cat big, and it will match files with big cat in their names. If I turn any word off again, it won't match those files unless I type in big cat in the correct order. For stricter searching, if I turn off the partial match option, it now won't find any results as none of the files are actually called big cat on its own. With partial matching off, I need to explicitly add a wildcard if I want to match names which start with big cat and have other characters after it. While copying files, the progress dialog shows a graph indicating how the copy speed changes over time. When creating zip archives which use AES encryption, Opus now uses the WinZip standard instead of the PKWare one. This means encrypted zip archives made with Opus will work with more software. The new uncompressed column lets you see how large archives will be if they're extracted, before they're extracted. The file display can now display metadata tags for Opus Audio files. The Opus Audio format, apart from its name, is unrelated to Directory Opus. On Windows 7 and above, MP4 metadata can also be displayed, and on Windows 10 and above, basic MKV metadata can be displayed as well. In the Replace dialog, when copying images, you can now double-click either thumbnail to open both in the viewer and flip between them. Double-clicking also works for other types of files individually. The new Keep Newer option allows you to keep the file which was modified most recently without having to work out which one that is yourself. Okay, that's all for this video. If you want more, there are even more changes discussed in even more detail in the Opus 12 release notes at the back of the manual. And there are other videos with more to come which dig deeper into these subjects and more. Thanks for watching all the way through, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, yeah, and if you haven't looked at Opus since 11.0, there are also two and a half years of free updates to go through, which, some big and some small, added a whole heap of new features, and those are out of scope for this video, but may still be important to you, so maybe check them out. Bye!